And before we talk about that, I want to talk about the initial changes that happened to her. When Zag lost Reconstitution at level 1, she lost her sustain in lane. I said that she was going to be a worse solo laner. And I ended up being wrong. The reason I ended up being wrong was because she does so much damage. Uh, Infest allows you to push a lane incredibly hard. It allows you to bully uh, your opponent out of lane because the Baneling change made Baneling so much better at clearing waves. If the enemy, if your your opponent in the solo lane tried to come in and clear the wave and fight your wave, you know, face on, even though you'd already cleared their wave, they couldn't do it because Infest just chunked them out. So Infest ended up being an absolutely critical talent. Even after its nerf, it's still like the, the go-to talent. And but the damage across the board nerf has made it worse because your your siege damage is not going to build up as fast because you're not doing as much damage. And I played a couple games today uh, versus a couple of different thralls. And I got uh, bullied out of lane a little bit. I still managed to win the lane eventually, but it wasn't completely one-sided, and it did take me longer. My infest had to build up a little bit before I could pull those shenanigans. But what I want to talk about primarily is the way the mountain speed change has affected Nidus Network. I used to think it was pretty close to 50-50, and it was kind of map or comp dependent. Um, but I think if you're on any of the big maps now, after the mountain speed change, Nidus Network is, is the default. If you're on, uh, you know... Cursed Hollow, if you're on um, Sky Temple, if you're on even Towers of Doom, any of any map where it takes more than like 10 to 14 seconds to rotate from the bottom lane to the top lane, Infest is going to be the default. Um, question from chat, why is Infest active instead of passive? Infest is active instead of passive, so you don't necessarily have to reveal yourself in lane. If, I, like, if there was a minion wave here... And I didn't want to show myself that I was in this bush. I'm just body soaking this lane. I can turn it off, and then the minions won't be big. See, they're small right now. I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. Oh, now I'm here. I'm revealing myself. You can see the minions got bigger. That is why Infest is an active ability instead of a passive ability. So talking about this build, I think this is this is the currently the default build for Zagara uh, with Nidus Network. But I wanted to explain why it's the default build. So we take Infest. That's absolutely critical. We take Medusa Blades, and the advantage of Medusa Blades it isn't the splash damage in team fights. A lot of people think you take it for the splash damage in team fights. That's not the case. What you're actually taking it for is extra siege damage. So you notice I'm gonna I'm gonna start auto attacking this wave, and my siege damage is building up really fast. If I get to a structure and I can, I'm actually just gonna go over here. If I get to a structure and I'm auto attacking the structure, I'm also hitting the wall. The wall counts for siege damage. So I'm building up my Siege Damage faster by taking Medusa Blades. And if you're building up your Siege Damage faster, then Infest is getting faster, or better faster. Bile Drop, very same thing. Uh, Bile Drop increases the um, impact damage 50%. There's requests for hitting heroes with it. You actually don't care about hitting heroes. If you can hit heroes with it, great. But otherwise, you're just doing this all the time. You're putting it on the back four minions in the wave, and it's building up your Siege Damage faster, which is increasing your Infest faster. All of these talent choices are about making Infest better and increasing the speed of your wave clear because they are increasing your siege damage significantly. We take Nidus Network. Uh, Tidal Transfusion doesn't heal you for enough to really be better than either Protective Coating or Spell Shield. So you take Protective Coating if you're constantly fighting on your creep and you're not getting bursted out by mages. If you're getting bursted out by mages, you take Spell Shield. It's sort of like a, it's a very simple dynamic. Uh, we'll take Spell Shield in this case. We'll pretend they have like a Leeming and, and a Kerrigan or something. Both of whom do a lot of ability damage. Uh, I haven't had any success at all with Corrosive Saliva, to be honest. I tested it even against like a Cho'Gall, and it just it didn't really do uh, as much. Mutalisk has an area of effect uh, splash, so if I put it on a wave, I'm going to get, that's right, more siege damage. And really, even in the late game, when you're a Nidus Zagara, you're trying to push in all the lanes constantly. More wave clear and more siege damage is always just going to be better. And then the Capstone, Endless Creep. This allows you to do the old backdoor shenanigans, so if the enemy team still has a keep up, you know, Endless Creep gives you enormous... Look at look at, look at this. Look at how far I can spread my Creep Tumor. I can put a Creep Tumor, like, right here. I'm way over here. And then I can put my Nidus Network up. And I could be there instantaneously, especially if I had to remember to put a Nidus Network here first. But uh, it opens up the old backdoor strategies that used to exist. And it even gives you long-range scouting options, right? Uh, you can just... Like there's a boss down here, I can put put that put the creep tumor on the boss. I'm not close enough that I'm in danger of being you know rotated on or ganked, but it gives you late game scouting and late game vision often results in just outright winning team fights. So that's the uh, the 
the old Zagara build, but an explanation of why it's good. And I think it's going to be the new Zagara build as well. I don't think that she was made worse enough to change her talent priorities. And if you're on a big map and you just want to sort of anaconda the entire map and slowly grind the enemy team out, this is the go-to build to do that. And all of it's about empowering that infest and just uh, increasing your survivability.